Hello, today I'd like to reflect with you on the first reading from the seventh, from Tuesday of the seventh week of Easter on this memorial of St. Philip Neri. It's taken from Acts chapter 20, verses 17 through 27, the beginning of Paul's farewell address to the priests of Ephesus. From Miletus, Paul had the presbyters of the church at Ephesus summoned. When they came to him, he addressed them. You know how I lived among you the whole time from the day I first came to the province of Asia. I served the Lord with all humility and with the tears and trials that came to me because of the plots of the Jews. And I did not at all shrink from telling you what was for your benefit or from teaching you in public or in your homes. I earnestly bore witness for both Jews and Greeks to repentance before God and to faith in our Lord Jesus. But now compelled by the spirit, I am going to Jerusalem. What will happen to me there, I do not know, except that in one city after another, the Holy Spirit has been warning me that imprisonment and hardships await me. Yet I consider life of no importance to me, if only I may finish my course and the ministry that I receive from the Lord Jesus to bear witness to the gospel of God's grace. But now I know that none of you to whom I preach the kingdom during my travels will ever see my face again. And so I solemnly declare to you this day, that I am not responsible for the blood of any of you, for I did not shrink from proclaiming to you the entire plan of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So just as we joyfully are welcoming people back to church with the resumption of public masses, we have a very sad reading, a farewell, a valedictory address of St. Paul. From Miletus, Paul summons all the priests of the church of Ephesus, and he addresses them. This was typical in the ancient world to have a farewell address, particularly when uh, Paul was certain that he would not see their face again. He recounted his own connection with those priests, how he lived among them, and he wants them to imitate him uh, just as he has imitated Christ. In fact, Paul says in one place in Scripture, it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Well, how did he serve them? How was he with these priests at Ephesus? He says, I serve the Lord with all humility and with the tears and trials that came to me. Do we do the same? Do we serve the Lord humbly? Do we willingly accept tears and trials in the life of a disciple? Or do we want everything to be easy? Are we proud because we have some knowledge of the Lord or some education? How do we serve? Right? True authority is for service, not to dominate over others. Paul carried out his ministry amongst them, and he says, I did not at all shrink from telling you what was for your benefit. To say, this is your true good. Parents sometimes have to do this for their children. But do we do that? Or do we sort of turn a blind eye to people's faults, to people's bad behavior that is only going to hurt them? Do we tell them, what truly is for their benefit, for their own good. And Paul continues, I did not at all shrink from telling you what was for your benefit or from teaching you in public or in your homes. Right? He's not afraid to express the fullness of the teaching about the Lord Jesus in public or in homes. Sometimes today, the government and other people want us to keep faith as something private. But how could we keep to ourselves this precious treasure? Rather, We should proclaim the truth in love and in its fullness, not shrinking from our duty, worrying about what will people think of me. Paul then continues, I earnestly bore witness for both Jews and Greeks. So we are all called to bear witness, but how earnestly do we do it? Are we very fervent for the Lord and zealous for the Lord, or are we more lukewarm? Paul earnestly bore witness for Jews and Gentiles, that is, for all peoples known to him. But to what did he bear witness? To repentance before God. He called people to a deeper deeper and deeper conversion, to leave behind their sins. But repentance is not the whole story. Turning away from our sins is a necessary part of the story. But Paul says, I bore witness to repentance before God and to faith in our Lord Jesus not just leaving behind the sins, but profession of faith, moving something forward, something positive, and not just in anyone, but in the Lord Jesus, in whom we have our salvation. 
This is the message that Paul constantly proposed to Jew and Gentile alike. But then Paul continues his address after saying, here's what I've done for you. Now he's saying, here's what's going to happen to me. I'm going to Jerusalem. We know that when Jesus turned his face earnestly toward Jerusalem, where it would lead him. Paul doesn't know exactly what's going to happen, but he knows that the Holy Spirit has been warning him that he's going to uh, be imprisoned and that hardships will await him. Remember, recall that Paul and Barnabas had said, it is necessary for us to undergo much suffering, many hardships to enter into the kingdom of God. What type of Christianity do we want? A Christianity that is easy, that doesn't involve suffering or the cross, or in fact, one that involves embracing the cross and a hardship in life, but then passing on toward the resurrection, right? Sometimes we have to endure great hardship and we find our character is formed and shaped in the struggle. We cannot shy away from hardship or even persecution. And Paul certainly does not because he has the spirit of God within him. He continues, I consider life of no importance. He has died to Christ and now lives for Christ. If only I may finish my course and the ministry that I receive from the Lord Jesus. In another place in scripture, Paul says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Could we say the same? That we consider our life and a human respect of little importance to us if we should only finish our course and end up in heaven, having been faithful to all the duties that Christ has given us. He has given us many gifts, but many responsibilities. Have we finished the course? Have we finished the ministry that we have received from the Lord Jesus? Well, what is that ministry? To bear witness to the gospel of God's grace. Paul doesn't actually use these words, gospel of God's grace in his writings, but perhaps all the Pauline letters and so on could be summarized in that way. Good news about what God does for us good news about God's friendship, good news about God's mercy. Paul himself had persecuted the church, yet God gave him another chance and made him a chosen instrument of salvation for the Gentiles, for the nations, for the kings, and for his own people. But then Paul concludes, but now I know that none of you to whom I preached the kingdom during my travels will ever see my face again. He knows what awaits him. He's going to Jerusalem and he will endure hardship, but eventually he will go to Rome, to the ends of the earth, and there he will bear witness. Paul con concludes today's passage by saying, and so I solemnly declare to you this day that I am not responsible for the blood of any of you, for I did not shrink from proclaiming to you the entire plan of God. And so I just want to propose to you this idea. Paul sensed that he had to propose the gospel of salvation to fulfill his duties, his responsibilities toward his fellow man. But now that he's done it, each person who hears him has to choose whether to believe or not to believe. So too, it is for us. We have a responsibility to propose the faith to others, though we cannot impose it. The faith itself has been proposed to us. And we must make a choice. Do I believe or do I not believe? Pope Benedict XVI spoke of faith and the context, content of faith, but he said, ultimately, we can speak also of an act of faith. Faith is taking our stand with the Lord Jesus so as to live with the Lord Jesus. That is how Paul lived, and that is how, how Paul died, as a friend of God, in friendship with the Lord Jesus. May we imitate this great apostle.